So here's a spectrometer we're building. Here's a finished one. Again, you look through the eye hole here. The light comes in through this slot, hits that diffraction grid, diffracts, and then bounces off at an angle this way. When you look through here, you're looking at a scale on the right side of the spectrometer. So here's a one that you could open up and see. So the light's coming in through this slot, through the baffle, hits the diffraction grid, and then you're looking up on here. The calibration of this is actually really, needs to be really accurate. And the way I did that is, um, this is a given equation for Mr. Hunter. Lambda, lambda is the length of a wave, so lambda is wavelength equals d, that's the distance between the, the actual grid parts in the diffraction grading. And then sine of theta, sine is a trig function for a ratio of opposite over hypotenuse. And theta is the angle between where that light comes in and where it bounces out. If I can figure out what that angle is, then I can figure out that calibration between where the, the light comes in and all of my different light bands. Okay. So this equation is really, if I solve for theta, my independent variable theta by itself, I divide both sides by distance, and I have lambda over distance. And then I have sine of theta equals lambda over distance. I take the arc sine of both sides, and that gives me an angle that's equal to the arc sine of the wavelength. And I, can, I know what that is. I can find that out. Divided by the distance on that grid. Uh, the distance on that grid is actually given is spaces per inch, so everything in light is metric, so it's converted into um, nanometers per groove, so it got a metric conversion. Everybody kind of understand that a little bit? So this is just a given equation, and then I took the wavelengths, which was on the scale right here. We want 400 nanometers, 500, 600, and 700 nanometers, so that's my given wavelengths that I want. And then this is a constant based on the diffraction grid we have here. So then I just took the arc sine. I took the arc sine of the 400 nanometer wavelength, and I divided that by the, the, the diffraction grid of 2,000 nanometers. So that gives me 400 divided by that 2,000, and that's 0.2. Then I took the arc sine of 0.2. And that gave me an angle of 11.54 degrees. So this angle on the first one should be 11.54 degrees. Then on the next one at 500, I did the same thing. 500 divided by 2,000.25. The inverse sine of that gave me 14.48 degrees. Then over to 600 divided by 2,000, the arc sine gave me this angle. And then at 700, it gave me that angle. The only problem with now that I know these angles I can't really figure out um, that angle with a protractor. Because I'm accurate you know, to the hundreds place here, and there's no way to do that with a protractor. So instead, if I could measure the overall arc length, then I could measure that arc length over um, and figure it out. Okay? So that's kind of the next step. So this is actually a circle that's this large, and then this is the radius of that circle. So that radius, this whole thing's a circle, you know, going around like this. And this is a radius of the circle. And that radius is 200 millimeters long. So I want to figure out how far over, what portion of that arc I need to go over. So I have my four different units up here, 400, 5, 6, 700 nanometers. Those are the watt wavelengths. And then I have a corresponding angle that goes along with them. So to figure out the length of this arc, I find the circumference of the whole circle. Circumference is 2 pi r, where r is the radius of 200 millimeters. So it's equal to 2 pi 200 millimeters. So all the way around that circle is 1,256.64 millimeters. So that's the distance for that full circumference. So I take that circumference and I multiply by the ratio of what I want over the total. So I know I don't want to go 360 degrees as a full revolution. I don't want a full revolution. I only want 11 of the 360 degrees. So I do 11.54 degrees over the total of 360 degrees. And then that 
that gives me 40.28 millimeters. So that's how far over I go. So what I did was I printed out these, you know, these scales right here. These scales we're going to cut out and tape inside of our spectrometer. And then to see if they were accurate or not, I used a caliper and I had, I mean, the nice thing about digital calipers are metric as well. So I set it in mil millimeters and then I checked the distance between here and here that it was 40.28 millimeters. And these are. Did everybody understand that? So you're actually just finding the length of an arc by taking the overall circumference, multiplying by the angle you want over the total angle. So, you know, to find the 500 nanometer distance, you would take that same circumference, multiply it by the ratio of 14.48 over 360. Any questions on any of the math?